Hey guys, Podge92 here, and in this video I wanted to give you guys a sort of a beginner explanation um, of Walsh and Lords of Mayhem, how to sort of get into the game, how the game sort of works in terms of its systems, um, just a very brief overview, so it won't be a very long, won't be too long of a video, but you know, I'm going to go into sort of some slight, not depth, but I'm going to explain how things work anyway, so anyway, we're basically just going to get straight into it. Um, the game has two modes, um, offline and online. So basically, offline mode is if you want to play a single-player type game that doesn't rely on any servers. So there's no no worries of things like latency and you know ping and whatnot. Online is obviously connected to a server, um, and you can trade items with players, things like that. It's much more community-based sort of style of game. However, lately. There has been some issues, but I mean, the game is only like two or three days old at this point. So, you know, I would take it with a grain of salt. I mean, the, you might see some negative reviews on Steam, but that's just because people are very impatient with a brand new game. So anyway, to get started, you've basically got your, but your button up here to switch between online and offline mode. Um, we, you just press the button and it takes you to offline. This is my current character. His name is Willie the Penetrator. <laughs> And uh, he's level 22. He's an angry Scotsman. I basically just skin transferred, like transmogged him so that he's completely butt naked. Well, as naked as the game can have. Um, and you can see he's angry by the fact that he has glowing white eyes. Anyway, enough of that. <laughs> so to create a character, I'll just create a new one just to show you the character customization progress process. So you can pick male or female. Now this guy looks exactly like the Crusader model from Diablo 3. I don't know if that's intentional or what, but you know, whatever. So, you basically would pick a female. You've got a choice between four heads, four different faces. So, you just pick whichever one you want. You've got skin color stuff, um, you know, how, however you want them to go. You can choose individual eye colors, which is quite interesting. I kind of like that. You can you know, customize them to look however the hell you want. You can give them like some crazy snake eye looking shit if you want. Like, let's just go with snake eyes because why not? Um, you've got hairstyles and hair colors. There's not too many to too many to um, choose from, but I feel like this is an area where they could add a lot of like maybe MTX type stuff in the future. You know, pay for different like hairstyles and stuff. This one's probably one of my favorites. This is what I used on Willy the Scotsman. <laughs> Willy the Penetrator. <laughs> Fuck. Um, so yeah, hairstyle and color, and then you can do facial hair. Obviously, that's not an option for female characters, which is a shame, I think. I'd love to be a chick running around with a beard. I think it would be freaking hilarious. But this, uh, so you basically click next, and you got to choose your starting weapons. So melee, ranged, or magic. Um, so we'll just pop melee. I'm, I'm not going to show you on this character. I'm just going to show you on the the Scotsman. Anyway. But um, yeah, so you pretty much that's character customization. You just pick and you just pick a fucking a name at will and um, press create and then there you go. So this is the town in Act 1. Once you're here, there are a number of people you want to talk to for sure. Mahabi is definitely one. And this person, Demetra, here, she sells your skills. So there is gold in the game. There is gold in the game. And basically, you unlock these skills, which are called Enoraks in the game. And depending on what sort of character you're playing, um, will determine what kind of skills you can use. Because some of them are very weapon specific. So see, like this one here, Livor Mortis, um, only usable with staves and catalysts. And because I'm using a dirty great two-handed sword I can't use the I can't use the skill so there are some that only use daggers bows and pistols all day. I have archives to tend to. she keeps interrupting me anyway so yeah you get the picture basically 2,000 gold for any skill if you want to refresh the vendor you just log out log back in and they'll have a different inventory full time. of stuff same What's with uh, with old mate Mahabi here he basically is your merchant that sells your weapons and armor um, you can obviously find loot in, in the wild as well, but you know, if you ever like find yourself struggling or you don't have quite a slot that you might want, so like this shoulder here has elemental damage and four toughness, I don't have any of that. 
this is actually so much a much a very good upgrade for me just because a blue item so you just vendor and sell like that with right click anyway so once you're actually in game i'll show you some combat now so we'll go to the next zone it's not like i have any other leads I'm just got to wait for the textures to load <laughs> she better help me put an end to this shadow war there's a lot of like in-game textile um voice acting which is actually such a cool feature I really appreciate the time and effort they put in. There is a dodge roll on spacebar, so when you're actually running around and you're trying to avoid an attack, so as you can see, combat is very smooth. Melee, melee combat is very smooth. But yeah, so there is a dodge roll on spacebar and it uses stamina. I have four points of stamina maximum at the moment. I think it, or according to the, the picture, it must go up to eight, so you can dodge eight times at most. Um, which is really cool. There's also a feature called auto dash, which you can enable or disable. It basically is used as a gap closer. So all you need to do to enable that is it's enabled by default, I should say. Sorry. Um, and all it needs, all it means, is when you left click to attack an enemy, if you're a distance away like that, it'll just close the gap instantly. You can use your dodge roll to position yourself. So, there's two um, resources in the game. There's obviously your life and force shield, which is kind of like a barrier that protects your life. There is also willpower and rage. Now, willpower is kind of like your... And think of it like mana, and rage is, rage is basically just the same as it is in any other game, usually. Um, it's like a... As you attack stuff and as you get hit, it generates rage. It makes you angrier. And that's what you use to use to cast a lot of your melee skills, like your big, hard-hitting melee abilities. And then, in turn, those also generate more willpower, which you can use to dump willpower to generate more rage as well. So it's, they're kind of like you spend spend willpower to generate rage, and you spend rage to generate willpower. So you've always got one or the other sort of at any given time. There is wild loot like that. You can also get loot from drop killing enemies which is really cool when i level up soon i'll uh i'll um show you how that works too Ooh, what's that shrine Ooh. so this shrine just dropped a bunch of these little silvery white glowing orbs and they grant Primordial Essence. Now, what Primordial Essence is, think of it as like an ultimate ability. And it, it gains charges as you kill monsters, right? Kind of like Vile Souls in Path of Exile, if you've played that. There's a, a marked skull on the map that generally denotes like a rare monster or a magic monster. So it's this bloke here, he's a rare. But what you can do with this Primordial Essence is if you press R, you basically transform into a fucking gnarly ass beast. Which is actually insanity. Like, oh, look at that. So, I mean, that is a super cool feature. I don't know how the hell they're going to balance the game around that. But, dude, it's nice. <laughs> it's pretty nice. This guy has a sick dash as well. Oh, look at that. I got to try and remember how, what buttons to use. So yeah, it's pretty pretty interesting. But anyway, so now we've leveled up and we have two buttons here. We've basically got a skill tree and a character sheet here. So when you level up, you get 10 attribute points to allocate to one or any of the four main stats in the game. So ferocity is basically your critical strike chance for spells and attacks. Toughness is your health and force shield, which is like energy shield in Path of Exile. I'm going to use a lot of Path of Exile terms just because I've played that game probably the most. But anyway, agility is your attack and cast speed for spells and attacks. And wisdom is your ailment chance. So basically to inflict bleed, poison, things like that um, from spells and attacks. Now the way it works is that Bonus damage gained from attribute points assigned. The primary attribute gives more bonus damage than the secondary and so on. So it works in the opposite way to diminishing returns. So the more you invest in one particular point 
or attribute, I should say, um, the more damage you're going to get from that attribute. But it takes the top three attributes and gives you a damage bonus based on all of those. So, in other words, you want to kind of leave one that you aren't going to use so much. So, for me, I'm, I'm not going to go Wisdom. I'm not going to spec into elements until I sort of learn a bit more how they work. Um, so, my current character is just going to be like a melee crit, hopefully pretty tanky, with some good attack speed, and we're just, we're just going to see how it goes. But So, you can um, hold Shift and click Plus to apply five points at a time, or you can just individually press them. So, if you want to press five, you just hold Shift like that. Um, like that, and then hit Confirm. And there you go. So, that's your, that's your attribute points allocated. Um, see this damage bonus went up a little bit as well, which is neato. Another thing is if you want to respec your character in uh, terms of attributes or passive skill points, um, you can actually spend gold to reset your attributes just by clicking the button here. Now, the skill tree... Okay, it's very Path of Exile-esque. So, it's very reminiscent of Path of, Path of Exile, except it has a, a really cool function over here. You can actually select a region and rotate it. So, you can rotate an entire region like this. Which is quite cool because if you can, you can do this on the fly, right? So, you could have a setup for, say, sing, like area of effect killing like trash mobs and stuff. And then you might just go, boop, and there you go. You're locked into your single target mode. So, obviously... The, the thing is, though, it has to connect to the very outside of the ring. So, there are these connector nodes, which basically means that if you're not allocated here, everything from here onwards does not apply to your character anymore. So, what you'll see is when I rotate it back this way, it'll actually highlight itself again. There you go. So, now it's connected. Now, it's actually functioning again. Um, so, to apply a point, you pretty much just grab wherever you would like, like that, and hit confirm. And that's that, that's easy done. You can reset your passive points by spending affinity. Now, in order to get affinity, you basically have to get Enerax, um, which are the skill books that drop. And you come over here and you sell them to the archivist here and you gain affinity here. There is another um, sort of area of customization and that is the skill menu. So you do that by pressing S and you've got all of your skills here that you've unlocked or your anagrams that you've unlocked. So you can uncheck these because we, we're not using a daggers, we're not using a staff and we're not using bows. So we're using melee basically. So it leaves you with all of your melee skills that you've unlocked. Now, see here, this one has a little plus on it, which means I've just unlocked a new attribute point for it. So see how here it says two out of four. So that means I've got four modifier points slots that I can take up. Now, each of these modifiers, think of them like a rune from Diablo 3, if you've played that. So it's, it's basically a, an effect that will change the skill's behavior in some way. Now, they each have a weighting. So one, 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 two. So these, these numbers here are the weightings of like what the choice is. So I can have up to four of these points at the moment. My skill's level 23, but you know, I'm not even sure what the max level is. I'm pretty sure it'd be like 40 or above, maybe. But so, if I were to uncheck these, see how I've gone back to four points? So, I can have something like converts base physical into sacred damage for three points, which, I mean, you know, it's up to you if you want to do that. Increase critical strike chance. So, that's one point. You can regenerate force field shield per enemy hit on landing. You can increase the knockback distance. You can generate more rage, which is what I like, and reduces the cooldown. Grants a buff for each enemy hit on landing. So there you go. So that's my. So now they're all greyed out. And as you level up the skill, which you do just by having it um, equipped and killing stuff, um, you can unlock more per perks through here. So this is how you basically customize your skill. And also, these points, the number of points that you have here, modifier points, they also increase as you level up the skill. You can also uh, spend your affinity to rank up your skills in this menu. So you can level up your skills by pumping affinity into them, um, just like so. So just level it up, you can level it up again. You can actually boost your skill way higher than your character level through doing this. And also, um, it allows you to unlock, you know, 
more advanced perks earlier on in the game, which is quite a neat feature, I think. Another thing is the gem system in the game. So you've noticed on my items here, there are some sockets and I'll show you what, how they work. So you basically pick up different gems here and they each have different stats on them based on the type of socket they're placed into. So you can see how this gem, this crude emerald has offensive one, two, and three, defensive one, two, and three, and support one, two, and three. So an item will have different types of sockets. So this, this socket here on this, this legendary chest is a defensive one. So what that means is if I was to place any gem in this in this socket, um, it'll pick the defensive one perk. So if I place this in here, I'll gain plus 10 fire resistance. You see? Um, so that's pretty much it. So you can also un uh, remove gems um, by talking to this person here, Xanifer Stark. So to do that, you'd literally just place the item in here and then remove gem for a thousand gold. Easy Boom, done. Easy. Pops out just like that. <laughs> Easy does it. So yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you like the gameplay. It's up to you whether you decide whether to buy it now or wait for it to sort of feel its feet first and maybe get some sort of patching done. It has we'll got a few issues, but it's very, very Be nice and it's very fun to play for so, sure. Uh, it's got a few interesting mechanics too, which is quite sweet. I love the meaty feel of the combat as well. That's quite nice. But yeah, for $60, I think it is, it might be worth waiting until it's on sale for now. At least until it's sort of patched out a bit and sort of smoothed out, because there are a few bugs, but it's nothing that sort of breaks the game at the moment. So yeah, I hope this guy, I hope this uh, video helped you guys in some small way. Leave a like in the comments. Leave a like in the comments. Leave a like and uh, leave a comment and let me know what you think of the game. But yeah, thank you guys and I'll see you in the next video.